I think, uh, Milton Friedman's uh, interpretation of the success of market systems is historically seriously wrong. Uh, and his faith in market systems to achieve uh, desirable ends, I think, is grossly mistaken. And I don't accept his values either. I don't think that uh, the uh, ability to succeed in a system of uh, competition is uh, much of a value to be admired. So I think there are plenty of differences, both in, I mean, let's just take, take the first, history. So take the United States, uh, the richest society, and most powerful society in the world. Uh, what was its, how did, how did it develop economically? Well, through massive state intervention, huge state intervention. I mean, what economists sometimes talk about is the high level of protectionism, which is true. The United States was a pioneer in protectionism in order to uh, develop uh, first the textile industries, the beginnings of you know, the beginnings of industrial development, then on through uh, steel and uh, uh, other uh, industries, it had to protect itself from superior British uh, 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 technology and uh, uh, production. And meanwhile, stealing technology from Britain and others. But that's the least of it. That's what economists talk about, but that's the periphery. I mean, the U.S. economy was built on vicious and murderous slave labor these slave labor camps in the South producing cotton that would have impressed the Nazis. And uh, they were quite efficient. Efficiency was in fact increased. Productivity was increased rapidly through the technology of a bullwhip and a pistol, uh, just by torturing people much more viciously. And that's the source, that's a large part of the source of the modern economy. Uh, not just c cotton, of course, was you know, the fuel of the early industrial revolution, but it's not just cotton production. Uh, cotton led cotton production, which expanded over the world, based very heavily in slave labor camps. Here was uh, uh, the basis for the development of the a lot of the merchant class of early industrialization. Uh, the biggest industrializations uh, anywhere were the, you know, the textile mills in Lowell and Lancashire and so on, uh, developed the uh, uh, the uh, financial systems which were used to finance it and arrange uh, interactions that became globalized. Uh, that's an enormous contribution to the economies, developing economy of the United States, of Britain, of other European countries, and so on. What's that got to do with markets? I mean, that's just a, a violent intrusion in market systems, and that's only part of it. Uh, what about clearing the uh, continent of its indigenous inhabitants. That's a pretty severe uh, interference of the state, of course, in uh, 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 human interactions in social and economic systems. I mean, they had an economy, in fact, a pretty advanced economy. It was destroyed. Uh, they were destroyed. There's some margins left somewhere in reservations. And that's just the beginning. I'm not even talking about the effect of uh, imperial aggression on developing the economy. I mean, the idea that uh, economies develop through market systems is so grossly false that you can hardly even talk about it. Of course, I talked about the United States, but the same was true of England before it, uh, basically the same methods, and of every other developed economy. Germany, France, uh, uh, France, for example, uh, and es it's estimated that about roughly 20% of France's wealth it comes from murderous, vicious slave labor in one colony, Haiti, which France virtually destroyed and is still contributing to destroying today. They participated in throwing out the elected president a couple of years ago. And that generalizes around the world. Uh, there, you can argue, you know, maybe right or maybe wrong, that markets are useful for things like conveying information. That's it's that can be disconnected from uh, assigning, from a, a, a giving gain and profit to those who are participating in them. If you come to the present, let's take a look at contemporary markets. Forget the history. So on the eve of the uh, last recession, for which the financial institutions were largely responsible, 
their share of corporate profits in the United States was about 40%. So they're a huge part of the economy. But where do they get their profit from? Well, actually, there was an IMF study a couple of, about a year or so ago, which tried to estimate the source of the profits of the six biggest American banks, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and so on. It concluded that uh, the profits come almost entirely from a public subsidy, an implicit public subsidy. It's called too big to fail informally, which is an implicit government guarantee that we're not going to let you fail. Uh, that gives them, of course, the credit rating agencies know this very well. They get higher credit ratings. They get access to cheap money. Uh, they get incentives to carry out risky transactions, which can be quite profitable uh, because they're going to be bailed out if they collapse. Uh, all of this amounts to a huge subsidy. Um, the business press estimated it at over $80 billion a year. There are various debates among economists as to what it is, but it's huge. Uh, that's the beginning. Uh, what about energy industries? Huge part of the economy. Uh, the IMF just came out with another study more recently, which estimated that worldwide, of course, concentrated in the rich countries, uh, uh, the subsidy from the public, it's called government subsidy, meaning from the public, amounts to maybe $5 trillion a year. Uh, this is a market system.